My name's Chaz Bruns. I'm just a goofy guy who loves to travel, and just like you, I want to see as much of the world as I can. The only difference is I happen to be a filmmaker, and I bring my camera pretty much everywhere. Which means you're going to get to find out some of the best places in the world to eat, some of the best people in the world to meet, Howdy, partner. and where to go to have a damn good time. And the best part is, I'm going to show you how to do it all dirt cheap. Good old Maine, land of lobster and trees. Lots of trees. But you know what? If it's summertime, there's nowhere I'd rather be than Bar Harbor, Maine. And whether you're flying or driving, you're probably going to have to go through Bangor. I suggest renting a car at Darlings. We're here at Darlings Ford in Bangor, Maine, getting a rental for $43.95. Let's go to Bar Harbor. Yeehaw! I actually grew up in Bangor. It's about an hour and 15 minutes to Bar Harbor. But I'm in no rush, and I already promised my dad I'd come say hi on my way through town. He's hanging out at his camp at Phillips Lake, and he's about to cook up some Maine lobsters. This is my, my salty old dad, Rick Bruns, and he's going to show us how to cook a real Maine lobster. Well, let's start with the beer first. Let me make sure it's okay. Perfect. Uh, my favorite beer to put in there is called Gagan Brothers Brewery. And I like their Smiling Irish Bastard beer to go in there because the hoppiness and everything makes brings out a little flavor in the lobster that's unique. You ready to put a lobster in the pot? Let's do it. Make sure it's just lobster in the pot. So see these bands that they put on the lobster? That's, they have very powerful pincers, so only the brave should do this. <laughs> I've dealt with lobsters all my life, so it's no big deal for me to take these off, but I don't like to boil the rubber with my lobsters. And the water's coming to a boil, so we'll do that just like that. So it should be done in 20 minutes. The lobster will turn red, and corn usually is a traditional main lobster feed, uh, go in together usually with some seaweed. The seaweed flavoring there is very good, and I highly recommend that as well as a beer. We just didn't have any seaweed today. I recommend real butter. Uh, just Again, the flavors are spectacular. You might as well have the real thing, and it's, it's not that bad for you in small amounts. Oh, good. But I like to put balsamic vinegar in. My son and I both enjoy real good balsamic vinegar, so it's, it's whatever you like for flavoring but that fresh lobster meat, sweet and tender, almost melts in your mouth. Market price that day was $5.95 a pound. Good. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's that I love lobster or I just love melted butter. <laughs> so my dad's camp is in Dedham. It's about a quarter of the way from Bangor to Bar Harbor. But there's not a whole heck of a lot to do there, so we're gonna head to Trenton, home of the wild Acadia Fun Park and water slides. They've got rock climbing, trampolines, a ropes course, go-karts, an arcade, and mini golf. But I'm not here to play putt-putt. I'm here for the water slides. We're at the Wild Acadia Fun Park. We're gonna go down the water slides. $15 gets you all day access to the pool and the water slides. We got a snack bar, we're gonna get some ice cream. Not a bad pit stop on the way to Bar Harbor. We're gonna do a water slide. And if 15 bucks is too rich for your blood, you can always pay $10 to go after 4 p.m. That's what I did, and it was worth it. Wild Acadia Fun Park is in Trenton, about 15 minutes outside Bar Harbor. And it's getting late in the day, so we're gonna go check into our first hotel. Once you cross into the island, Hingley's Dreamwood Cottages are about five minutes down the road. We booked a private cottage for $49. Even came with a kitchen and a sweet screened in front porch. But if you're looking for luxury, they have that too. This cabin ranges from $89 to $139 depending on the time of year. And it comes with a couch in case you want to share it with some friends. And if you are traveling in a group, this cabin has two beds and a couch. It ranges from $129 to $169. Now that we're all checked in, I'm getting hungry. Time to go crab hunting. This beach is two minutes down the road from our cabin, and I brought the number one hunting dog in the world with me, so hopefully she can help me find a crab. So this little cutie pie here, her name is Lucy, and not only is she the best dog to ever walk the face of the earth, but she's a professional crab hunter. So Lucy and I are gonna go find some crabs. You ready? Wanna go do some crab hunting? Yeah? Yeah? Find me a crab. Find me a crab. Come on. 
We never did find any crabs, but luckily for us, Bar Harbor is full of restaurants. And I heard you could get a 16 ounce beer for three bucks over at Blaze. So I went to investigate. Yep, the stories are true. Three dollar beers. But most people come here for the food. It's not super cheap, but it's done well. Top it off with a little garnish. Mm-hmm. They're best known for their wood-fired pizza and their friendly waitstaff. But if you're pinching your pennies, you can always do like me and just get a side of fries. So I know some of you might be thinking that spending $7 on some french fries is a little pricey, but these are duck fat french fries, and duck is one of my favorite meats on the planet, and truffle aioli is one of my favorite things to dip duck fat fries into, and here they have both. You really can't go wrong. Margarita anyone? Or whatever this is? Looks good. You know what? Cheers. Cheers. Life is good, Memorial Day weekend. Next up is Bar Harbor Beer Works and the One Off Pub. They're both in the same building and right off Main Street. And I'm coming here for one reason, the scorned woman shot. I have no idea what's in it, but I know it's spicy as hell. And they're world famous for it. And as you probably noticed with the fries, everything in Bar Harbor is a little bit pricey. Bar Harbor is known for being one of the most expensive places in the state of Maine. But it's worth it. This guy thinks so. But I won't let that stop me. I'm still going to try to find the cheapest things in town. Five bucks for a specialty shot is sounded pretty good. Here comes some acid reflux. Yeehaw! That is some spicy sh**. Dance the pain away. Dance the pain away. Wait, what's that I hear? The owner wants to buy me another shot? I guess I can always make room in my belly. You know, win and roll. How many is that now? Eh, who's counting? If you like to party, come check out Bar Harbor Beer Works and the One-Off Pub. They'll treat you right. So now let's switch from the map of Maine to the map of Bar Harbor. We're heading to Jordan Pond House. After a night like last night, I need a good breakfast. What do you think, Lucy? Do you like it? And obviously driving is ideal. But if you want to save money, there's a free bus system called the Island Explorer. It goes pretty much everywhere, but double check the schedule because it changes based on time of year. We took it to Jordan Pond House. They're famous for their popovers, and that's exactly what I'm going to get. So this is what Jordan Pond House is famous for. These are the popovers. And it's fresh um, raspberry jam, I believe, and butter. You can eat them however you want. I've seen some people get it with vanilla ice cream. There's really no wrong way, but they're, they're pretty damn good. Jordan Pond House popover. It's just the way I remember it as a kid. And Jordan Pond House is dog friendly, so feel free to bring the pooch. This is pretty much the view from your table. But you're going to want to take a walk down to the water. Tons of fish and beautiful flowers. I found a nice spot to chill down by the water. Lucy found herself a stick. Lucy approves. You like it out here? Yeah. She likes it out here. Beautiful weather. Couldn't ask for a better day. So here we are in the outskirts of downtown Bar Harbor, and we're headed to the visitor center to uh, buy the park pass. It's $50, but that gives you access to all of Acadia. You can go hiking, biking, uh, go to the top of uh, Cadillac Mountain, you can swim at Sand Beach. It also lasts for the full year, which is really great, so you can come and go if you want to come back. So part of the park pass we just bought allows us to come to the top of Cadillac Mountain. And there's a couple ways to get up here. The preferred method is hiking. If you're lazy like me, you can drive. Um, as you can tell, the views are beautiful. A uh, million plus people come to hike Cadillac every summer. So if there's one thing you're going to do in Bar Harbor, I might suggest coming up here. I stumbled upon a hippie doing yoga. My name is Josh Couturier. I came out here to do yoga. You can follow me right here. And it's beautiful out. I've never personally done yoga, but people who do say it's awesome. I'm loving it. Maybe I'll give it a try but not today. I don't know about you guys, but I'm in the mood to do some swimming. Some swimming in the ocean. So the park pass we just bought gets us into Sand Beach. 
A lot of locals used to sneak in from a secret parking lot on the other side of the park, but the rangers have become privy to it and they're starting to ticket anyone without a park pass. But I wanted to mention that if you're only in Bar Harbor for a few days and you're taking the free shuttles instead of driving, you can buy a 7 day pedestrian pass for 12 bucks. Uh, go swimming, boogie boarding, uh, no sharks as far as I've ever heard of, have ever been seen here, so it's a safe, fun place to swim, and it's all around great time. Want to know a little bit of Sand Beach trivia? Charlize Theron filmed a scene here from Cider House Rules. I love coming to Sand Beach because it's one of the only places where I can go hiking and then go chill out and have a picnic on the beach. My friend Kendra and I decided to mess around with my waterproof camera for a little while, and then I left her to go hiking on Beehive. So we just left Sand Beach and we're literally going to cross the street to hike up Beehive. Uh, shouldn't take us very long. We'll get up to the summit and I'll take a look around, show you the views. Should be a good time. Here's a view of Sand Beach. But we're not at the top yet. And here's the view from the summit. Uh, the $50 pass is totally worth it because you can hike all around here. You can go to Sand Beach. There are a lot of other beaches around. And this is my first time hiking this mountain and I'm really excited. It's really cool. The weather's awesome. And as you can see, the view is amazing up here. So we're wrapping up the end of the day here. It's almost sunset. Um, we're come down to Thunder Hole. It's only a two minute drive from Sand Beach and Beehive where we just were. And it can be a dangerous place. Um, somebody dies almost every couple of years here falling in. So do be careful if you come. The, the waves are a little stronger depending on what time of year you arrive and obviously when, whether the tide's in or out. I have no idea what it's going to be like today. Hopefully it'll be huge and crazy. Uh, we'll have to go down and check it out. We didn't get to hear the thunder sound it's famous for, but we still had a good time. Tonight we're staying at Smuggler's Den Campground. Got a sweet view of some mountains. Only cost 25 bucks. Comes with coin-op laundry and showers. And right about now I could use a hot shower and a warm meal. Time to grab some grub. I think we're going to head up into the uh, Dog and Pony Tavern here, get a $4 hot dog fries with a pickle, fill my belly up, maybe do some dancing, grab a beer, head on up. It was a little too early for dancing, but a few people were there to play darts. But I'm just here for the hot dog. We'll have to come back later when it's a little more hopping. After dinner, I took a stroll through downtown to the Balance Rock Inn. If you're looking to avoid the college party scene about Harbor, this place might be for you. I always come here for the outdoor fire. Lucy likes it too. And the outdoor pool is pretty cool too. And since the last time I was here, they've redesigned the bar. And obviously this is a classy place to stay, but if you want to experience the ambiance, spend $10 on a glass of wine. You won't be disappointed. When I got back to camp, I built a fire, hung out with Lucy, and then called it a night. Starting off the day with breakfast at the Trailhead Cafe. So I'm here at the Trailhead Cafe, free Wi-Fi, six dollar grilled cheese, pet friendly. Today we're setting up camp at Hadley's Point Campground, $26 a night. I'm not much of a biker myself, but if you're into it, you can rent one here. Bar Harbor Bicycle Shop, 19 bucks. I'm Tim Lowe, and I'm about to go biking. There's a ton of places to go biking in Bar Harbor. You could spend days doing it and still not hit all the trails. A lot of people like to go on the carriage roads. There's some cool architecture to check out. I personally love biking through the old tunnels. While Tim's exercising, I'm gonna go get some ice cream at Ben and Bill's, specifically lobster ice cream. Sounds really weird, but I promise it's delicious. 
Uh, our lobster ice cream, uh, we first started making this in 1988, it was the first time they made it and sold it to the public. Uh, it's a huge, huge attraction, obviously here at Ben and Bill's, as you can see. We have um, our lobster outside, which we call Baxter, uh, and he is our representative of our lobster ice cream. It is a vanilla based ice cream, uh, we sit the butter, we sit the lobster meat in butter for about a good hour. Um, and then we'll imp implement it into the ice cream, and here we go. And that's what you get with your lobster ice cream. You want a piece? But this is authentic, real lobster. A real, people down people think that's made weird lobster. To, to have lobster and ice cream mixed together, but I'm, yeah. every time I come to Bar Harbor, I get this, and it doesn't taste weird. It's nope. not. It's not like a novelty to try. It's literally just good as it is. It is. It's good. It really, really is good. You get that buttery kick off it, and the lobster. Obviously, it's frozen, so you have to actually leave it in your mouth a little, and then you'll get the whack of lobster. Now, if somebody's watching this in New York or LA, you know, a pound of lobster, if they go to Red Lobster, is, you know, 18 to 25 dollars. How much, yeah. to, to get this right here, how much does this cost? This will cost you 550. Bargain. Dinner and dessert in a dish. There's a lobster claw right there. There you go. For 550. Real deal. You can't go wrong, lobster or anything. Now I'm going to do a montage of sweet deliciousness. It was like the movie Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in here. Let's go walk off that lobster ice cream at the Somesville Museum and Gardens. The museum was closed while we were there, but there's still a lot to see. And it's free to walk around, but if you got some extra cash, please consider donating. Baby birds everywhere. If you're a photographer, you might want to bring your camera. And the best part about coming here is it doesn't cost a penny. Now let's check out some swimming holes. This one's on the north end of Long Pond, and it's included in your park pass. But it can get crowded here, so I opt to go to the secret swimming hole on the south end. It's a little bit of a hike, but it's worth it. So Lucy and I did it. We found the secret swimming hole at Long Pond. And no, I'm not gonna tell you how to get here. I don't think the locals will be very happy with me, but if you're nice enough and you meet somebody in town that's willing to show you, it's worth coming out here. There's a 20 foot cliff jump, which I'll do in a second. <laughs> I haven't done it since high school days, but I, hopefully I'll survive. Um, and if you don't want to jump off the cliff, you can always walk down the side and, and wade in. So here, here goes me jumping off a cliff. Geronimo! Oh, it is definitely cold. <laughs> Next, we headed over to check out the view at Schooner Head, also included in your park pass. It's beautiful. But be careful where you step, because there's a lot of seaweed and it's a long way down. Lucy really wanted to hunt some birds, but the seagull was like, Bitch, please, I'm twice your size. So we promptly ran away. Next up was the Bar Harbor Inn. They've got some amazing views and even better drinks. I got an ice cold beer for $4.95. Most people come here for the food, but I'm here for the view. And it was a pretty awesome sunset that night. Lucy approved. It's times like this that I'm reminded that Maine really is the way life should be. We ended the night at the Finback Alehouse. I'm here to grab a $3 beer. And every year we come back, Finback is the first place we come to. We just absolutely love it here. Because it's delicious and cheap. We, we love, love Finback Ale House. Time for breakfast at Cafe This Way. And guess what? It's the 4th of July. Happy 4th of July from Bar Harbor. A little coffee to get me going this morning. They use these like 1950s style paper straws. They're my favorite. It's pretty awesome. Breakfast has arrived. And yes, I'm one of those weirdos that puts ketchup all over my food. 
I know a lot of you are cringing, but love ketchup my whole life. And for six dollars, I got scrambled eggs, hash browns, and toast. For four bucks, you can do oatmeal, but I wanted something a little heartier. Cure my hangover. And this is looking pretty good. After breakfast, Lucy and I set up camp at the Bar Harbor Campground. $34 a night. A few of their sites overlook the ocean. Not too shabby. And they've also got a pool. Try to put the tent together. It's harder than it looks. These guys make it look easy. We are After a bit of a struggle to set up my tent, I wanted to go for a swim. So Lucy and I headed to the Lakewood Swimming Hole. Even the dogs were cliff jumping. But the cliffside was a little too high for Lucy, so we went over to the sand beach. I guarantee Lucy's the only chihuahua in the state of Maine that knows how to play fetch. Must be that Jack Russell Terrier in her. Happy 4th of July from Bar Harbor. Woo! Lakewood is included in your park pass. I found a frog prince, but Lucy was having none of his advances. She was so grossed out by that frog kiss that she tried to wipe his cooties off in the dirt. <laughs> I'm sure she'll get over it. Let's go see what's going on at the parade. I just woke up in the apartment, heard some awesome music, stepped outside to check it out, and it's just this big free party in the street. You know, it's uh, an hour or so of entertainment in the morning with, uh, with all the floats processing down. And I'm gonna hang around town and check out the fireworks in the evening because Bar Harbor's never boring. Monday morning, 4th of July, we're here. We're downtown Bar Harbor. We're about to go and check out the craft fair, uh, the lobster race, there's a seafood festival, live music, all kinds of stuff. Let's go do it. They are cooking up a ton of lobster here. 25 bucks gets you the seafood platter. And since the event is free, I think it's a fair deal. All right, getting ready to eat the lobster dinner. $25 for the seafood platter. If you just want the lobster, it's $19. So not a bad deal considering that's what most restaurants charge around here. And you get to be in the whole atmosphere and experience the 4th of July awesomeness. Now that my belly's full, let's get back to the festivities. Let's go bet on the lobster races. I'm feeling lucky. And even if I lose, the money goes to charity. Five dollars to win. Local kids choose their favorite lobsters from the cooler and then they throw them into the pool. The first to cross the finish line is the winner. I knew I should have bet on that lobster. Damn it. I lost everything on a lobster named Van Halen. While I'm getting over my lost bet, check out all the stuff you can do at this festival. I found a guy making snow cones and he actually had a chicken broth one for Lucy. I'm gonna try the chicken broth one too just to see. Tastes like chicken broth. <laughs> and ladies, you're gonna wanna check out the craft fair. This place was huge. I even stumbled upon some medieval warriors battling it out. Lucy got really into it. People are already choosing their seats to watch the fireworks. As you can see, lots of people, lots of fun. Doesn't cost me a dime. You know, it's cheap, easy, fun, everyone loves it. So uh, if you get a chance, come out this way and celebrate it next year. Happy 4th of July from Bar Harbor! The cheapest fireworks cruise we could find was Bar Harbor Whale Watch. 30 bucks. Just board of the Bar Harbor Whale Watch uh, fireworks cruise, getting ready to leave the bay. Got myself a $6 whiskey ginger. America, baby. And I know a lot of you are thinking, this isn't cheap, but this is Bar Harbor on 4th of July. Not only do you get to see the fireworks from a boat, 
but you get a historical tour of the island and you might even see some seals. It's 4th of July and I can't wait to see the fireworks from the bay. This was cute, but then the big boys came out. Watching from the boat was awesome, but in case you're wondering, this is what it looked like on land. Now that I was buzzed and partially deaf, I figured it was as good a time as any to go to the bars. Happy Fourth of July! Happy America! Life is good! Now we're headed to set up our tent at the Seawall Campground. The site costs 30 bucks. After setting up the tent, I got hungry. So we headed over to the Southwest Food Mart. Lucy was looking a little bored, so I decided to spice her day up with some local bacon for $3.83 and some local eggs on sale for a buck. I also grabbed a couple tinfoil trays to cook it in. After we got some groceries, we headed over to an Oceanside picnic area in front of our campground. I gathered up some twigs and made a fire. One of the many skills I learned at Camp Jordan Leader School when I was a kid. Well, I'm going to do the, the bacon first, so I'll get a layer of fat on there so that the eggs don't stick to it. You know, sitting breakfast on the ocean. Life couldn't be better. Cooking good, real good. Yeah, bacon. It's probably one of the worst things on the planet for you, but it also is one of the best tasting foods that exists. I love bacon. So if the fire ever starts to die down on you, give it a little oxygen and you can just blow on it, but don't blow too hard and don't get your face too close because I've done that and it can burn your eyebrows right off. There we go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw the egg right in with the bacon, kill two birds with one stone. I think it'll cook up pretty good. So it looks like my eggs and bacon are finally cooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it right in a tin foil because it'll double as a bowl. And I'll just eat it with my hands because I'm in Maine and I'm a Mainer and that's what we do. Eggs and bacon for breakfast. Dipping it right in the yolk. It's damn good. You know, a lot of people say you gotta spend a lot of money in Bar Harbor, but it's just not true. This is one of my favorite things to do. Want a piece loose? Here you go. So there's no showers at the Seawall Campground, but down the street there's a general store that'll let you rinse off. But I'd rather do it the old fashioned way. Let's go swimming. The famous Echo Lake Beach is included in your park pass, but if you hike a little ways down the lake, you'll find a lot less people. Lucy and I found a pretty cool spot. And no matter where you go in Echo Lake, there's always rocks to jump off, so you can't really choose a bad place to swim. We love swimming at Echo Lake. My favorite thing in Bar Harbor is to go to the beach. My favorite thing in Bar Harbor is to eat ice cream. I'm with her. Let's go to 123 Main Street in Northeast Harbor. It's a little more expensive than the lobster ice cream, but it's huge and delicious. It's worth every bite. And I just think it's cool in here. If the $6 Sunday is out of your price range, have no fear. Pine Tree Market is here, home of the $3 lobster roll. So Lucy and I finally did it. We found the cheapest lobster roll in the Bar Harbor area. $2.99. Believe it or not, the lobster comes fresh daily from Little Cranberry Island. The owner says he's willing to lose some money on it because it gets people through the door. This is actually a ton of meat for a $2.99 lobster roll. Guess what? Crab rolls are a buck ninety-nine. 
Lucy was jealous. After lunch, we went to Seal Harbor. That's where the Rockefellers and Martha Stewart spend their summers. It's included in your park pass. My 85-year-old grandmother used to spend her summers here waiting tables. Back in 1949, she worked at the historic Seaside Inn. Sadly, it was torn down in 1963. And my twi twin sister and I um, went to, to Seal Harbor, at Seaside Inn at Seal Harbor, and waited on tables for the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers were, the, were great to wait on, tipped very well. All the people that worked with me were so excited that they were visiting. My favorite things were to go hiking. They were wonderful years, carefree and gay. <laughs> Isn't she the sweetest? Most people come to Seal Harbor to kayak. For $48, you can go out with the National Park Sea Kayak Tour. Or if you have your own, feel free to go anywhere your park pass allows. I filmed my dad as he paddled around in his kayak. It's a beautiful day for kayaking. He's known in our family for his one-liners and words of wisdom. Here's just a few of them. You know, you gotta go out and find the wow now. You gotta realize what's important in life. Prioritize, because we're on a spinning rock in the middle of a void with nothing remotely like us for light years in any direction. Be nice to everyone. Find the good things in life and take a deep breath and enjoy it. I am the greatest man of Tumatra. <sighs> well, now you know where I get it from. Let's head back into town so I can show you one of my favorite stores, the Rockin' Art Shop. If you're into weird, crazy, kooky, bizarre ass stuff, this place is for you. I love weird sh Taxidermy bad, anyone? Or maybe a bird's more your style. They've got that too. And don't feel bad for the baby ducklings. They were bad. They smoked a lot of quack. I totally stole that joke from the owner, but it's a good one. There's a lot of weird stuff in here. The owners scour the earth trying to find stuff that they think is cool. I'm a big fan of their work. I could spend all day in here. This place really deserves its own episode. My camera just doesn't do it justice. There's some amazing stuff in here. Looks like it's time for another montage. Besides this being my favorite store in Bar Harbor, I wanted to take you guys here because some of this stuff is dirt cheap. And remember, no matter what you buy here, just don't taste the poisonous rocks. They really will kill you. Just down the street is the historic Criterion Theater. After being released from prison for bootlegging, founder George McKay decided to go legit and open this badass theater back in 1935. They're showing the movie Alien for the Acadia Night Sky Festival for six bucks. After the theater, I came across a dog wearing a polka dot dress and a dude spinning fire which inspired me to go back to my campsite and make a fire of my own. Had enough bacon and eggs left over from this morning to make myself a second meal. Right in the bacon fat. <laughs> Grease fire. After dinner, I had a beer and then hit the sack. Tents all set up at Smuggler's Den. 25 bucks. Had to come back. Not only do they have a pool, but their general store sells lobster. My kind of camping. For breakfast, we're heading to the famous Jordan's Restaurant. So we're here at Jordan's. It's a staple in downtown Bar Harbor for a place to get 
anything you could imagine for comfort food. They've got blueberry pancakes, eggs, bacon, hash browns, sausage. Here's the owner, David. He's been here for 39 years, cooking still on the line. He's a man. This place is wicked busy, and David has a system to make it all flow. He has the wait staff yell their orders at him. Order to go, please, an egg white bacon cheddar egg -a bagel. Which doesn't seem bad until the rush hits. Wow, that was annoying. I don't know how he does it. Must have the memory of an elephant. He got our order out in under 15 minutes, hot and no mistakes. Yum. Add a little Maine maple syrup. I wish I had time to try it all. Two wild Maine blueberry pancakes for eight bucks. Now it's time for some Maine facts. The population is 1.33 million. It's covered in roughly 90% trees, and we caught 121.1 million pounds of lobster last year. That's roughly 495.4 million bucks. My friend Ron offered to take us out on his boat to show you guys how it's done. We're gonna catch us some lobsters. This actually isn't a traditional lobster boat. It's made more for deep sea fishing, but Ron has his license to catch lobster too. I have a commercial license, but I don't do it for a living. I do it as a hobby. So I can fish 800 traps, 600 now, they changed the law. But I only fish 20 because all I want is lobster for family and friends out in front of the house. So that's a big male. Those two things right there, long and hard male, soft and short female. That's probably a three pound lobster. So that's a nice lobster. That's a keeper, for sure. Between here and here, between the back of the eye socket and the back of the shell, it, can, it cannot be shorter than from there to there. So that one's a keeper. On the other hand, can't keep a lobster in Maine that's larger from there to there. Back of the eye socket to the back of the cell so you can see what size, how much bigger that lobster could be. So this is a stone crab, rock crab. These are wonderful. These are sweeter than lobster meat. This one's fairly small, so we're not gonna keep him. But rock or stone crab takes about 16 or 18 of these to pick to get a pound of crab meat. That's why crab meat's expensive. But this is a really sweet meat in these crabs. We'll get a few crabs today to keep, but we'll throw him back. Herring is the best lobster bait there is, but herring is, uh, there's a shortage of herring this year. It's gone up in price dramatically. So I've got, I picked up some, these are pogies. So pogies are good bait as well. So what you do is you, you pack that bait bag tight. That bait bag goes on here. And what happens is lobsters swim backwards. So lobsters smell the bait, they come into the kitchen, eat some of the bait, some of the lobster get out. This is a four foot trap, so it's got a living room and a den. The lobsters are trying to find their way out. Some do, some will get caught in the living room. And if they get caught in there, they'll, get, they'll move in here to try to get out of the den. Once you get them in here, you got them. This vent is, uh, is one in 15 16 So if a lobster gets in here, it's got a way to get out. So that's the legal size of the vent that you have to have. You pull these traps about every three to four days and the guys that do it for a living pull between 200 and 250 traps per day. A lot of starfish down there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty prime season right now, so this is good. I'm releasing it back to the lot. This is a 12 inch hydraulic hauler. A lot of guys lose fingers on these, so that claw is broken off because that guy bit his claw off. A lot of them are cannibalistic. So they will eat each other. So this is an egger. See the eggs? Oh yeah. Thousands of eggs on these things. And this is a female. She was notched, see that notch right there? So someone else caught that lobster and notched it. So it's an egg-bearing female. These are, good, these are good to eat. So that's just caviar. And it's sweet, it's salty, but it's sweet. Doesn't get fresher than that. No, nope, that's fairly <laughs> fresh. But I'm going to re-notch it because as they grow, this notch obviously grows in. Yep. And you just cut a V into that notch. You get these every once in a while. This is a, um, it's a snail, but it's got a, uh, a crab that lives in it. So it's a hermit crab. If you set that crab down, sooner or later that crab will come out and start walking out of that uh, with a shell. So wait a couple minutes. 
sea cucumber. <laughs> Smells like sea cucumber. It's like a freshwater one pelt, only in salt water they call it scalpins. This is a Jonah crab. They're good eating, not quite as sweet as the rock or stone crab. What you used to do is you'd catch one, you'd break one of the big claws off, throw it back, and the claws will regenerate. But now they've uh, instituted a, uh, a different law, so you can't do that. But they're good eating. My friend Mary Ann showed us how to put the rubber bands on their claws, and it's harder than you think. Did it, got him. <laughs> He's not happy, not happy. After we finished pulling all the traps, we just cruised around the islands. Ron's wife Rose steered and Tim's mom Lillian was her co-pilot. I climbed all the sketchy places I could, trying to get good shots, you know, for you guys. When we got back to the dock, Ron counted up the haul. We got about 80 lobsters. Although there are some companies that offer some packages where you can pay to go out with a lobsterman for the day, they're kind of pricey. I suggest going down to the docks yourself and offering one of the lobstermen 20 bucks to take you out for the day. Better yet, offer to help him for free. It's hard work, but it's a great time. The weather changes quick in Bar Harbor, and we've been told a storm is a brewing. Going on the Bar Harbor whale watch. Screw the rain. I want to see some whales. Look at this. We are the who sail the high seas in the rolling foam and the crashing waves. The whales are out there. In our teeth, we tame the ocean and the gales that we meet. So it's actually pretty cold today in Bar Harbor. So I'm wearing my jacket. I'm going to get myself a uh, $4.25 beer to warm my belly up. Wish me luck. We could go into a storm today. There's a sweet lounge to chill in as we went out to sea. Got the whole damn place to myself. I'm captain of this ship. Although I was by myself, I did run into my yoga friend from Cadillac Mountain. It's raining, but I love it. I'm on the Titanic. So this is a piece of baleen from a humpback whale. And uh, plankton comes through and gets filtered on these little hairs and that's how they eat. Yum. It smells like plankton. There was just a whale out there. It just sprayed. It was crazy. We are the men who sail the high seas in the rolling foam and the crashing waves with the wind at our back and the ropes in our teeth. We tame the ocean and the gales that we meet. We tame the ocean and the gales that we meet. We are the men who sail the high sea. Bar Harbor Whale Watch is the cheapest in town. We got to see loons, puffins, seagulls, seals, sea lions, belugas, and finback whales for 59 bucks. Remember how I said 90% of Maine is covered in trees? Let's go cut some down. So here we are at the Great Maine Lumberjack Show with Timber Tina, and she's gonna tell us how she got into this business of lumber jilling in the middle of the Maine woods and a little bit about herself. So tell us, how the hell did you do this? Just started out by some, as a sport we were doing as little kids. Well, it's gotta be kind of an ancient dying art, right? I mean, there's not that many people that know how to do this stuff, right? No, and that's so. why I picked Maine to start my show because this is the birthplace of logging America. Yeah. Paul Bunyan was born here. That's right. And they Dave came, the here, yeah, they came here years ago looking for tall ship masts by the Queen's Navy in England because of the big white pines that grew here and are still growing here. So I thought it was yeah. a natural. So I got this land outside of Bar Harbor and here we are. Yeah. It's only thirteen dollars for adults, eight for kids, and under four is free. Yeah. We're the most reasonably priced entertainment or activity you can do in the Bar Harbor area. Okay. But during the day. We run lessons out here. Like you're gonna show me today, right? Yeah, so, so we, they, we do so lessons. So the viewers can come do this if you want to. She'll show, show you how to throw an ax. You and can be a lumberjack. Log rolling, all kinds of stuff. That's awesome. And yeah. that, that, you said earlier that was uh, about $10 per person for a group of six, it's right? It's $10 a person for yeah. a group of six. You can't beat that. Yeah, and you tell me where else in the world you're gonna learn log rolling walking off the street. I mean, I, where can you go learn log rolling? Is there even another place? I don't think so. <laughs> but I really like to share my sport with people. Do you think I'm gonna be able to do this first, first try? Well, some people, have, some people have beginner's luck, otherwise it, others take a little bit longer. But Will, you want, ready to go try? I, I'm ready to go. Let's All give right. it a try. Let's see what happens. Give it a try. Let's do it. That was a little low, but I think it might have hit if it hadn't been so you gotta, low. You gotta put a little more oomph. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> a little more aggression here. Yep, you want to get it in there. All right. Ready? Aim for the center. 
times a charm. Here we go. This is it. Aiming high this time. Hey! What'd I tell ya? Woo! Third time's a charm. Must be my Viking ancestry. Or just dumb luck. You want to just go back and forth. And in competition, you want to breathe. And use a full length of the saw. Don't lift up at all. That's it. Woo. So you're going to get on the log, on that side of the carpet, little itty bitty steps like that. She claims and this is, this is a beginner's log, an easy log. We'll see how, how easy this is. It, it is. It doesn't mean it does not make the water warmer though. Here we go. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Only <laughs> 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 like got three seconds then. Three seconds. Two and a half. It's easy. Falling off the log. Pitter patter, pitter patter, up and down. Look down here, look down here, look down here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah! Oh! oh. See? You landed on my feet this time. Look at this. Oh, maybe something. Pitter better, pitter better, pitter better. <laughs> when I got back to camp, I played with some sparklers, ate some leftover eggs and bacon, and called it a night. Today's my last day in Bar Harbor, and I've never seen it from the sky. So I'm going out with scenic flights of Acadia for an aerial view of downtown Bar Harbor. Thanks for watching. If you like the show, please hit like, subscribe, and comment below. I'll catch you next time on Dirt Cheap with Chaz Bruns. I'm flying across the ocean, just inches from the waves, deep breaths of fresh air. Feel the wind beneath my feet. I'm flying. I'm flying. I'm flying. I'm flying. I'm standing on a mountain, staring at the night sky. Cold night makes me shiver. Shooting stars cross the sky. I'm flying. I'm flying, I'm flying